So welcome guys to the Getting Started Right call and thank you so much for freeing up your time this evening or today, no matter where you are, um, to watch this call live. I always say to my girls, my team, it's always so much better if you can make it live if you can. I know it's not always possible, but um, I feel that you just get so much more out of the call. So with that being said, I am just going to share my screen. So I just need to find, there we go. That was a bit easier than usual. I'm just going to click present. So can you all just nod if you can see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So the getting started right call. Cool. This is you know, this is really a great opportunity for you to understand how all of those pieces, hopefully that you've been covering in the training all just fit together. And I know like certainly when I was a new starter, I kind of, I just did the training and was like, okay, cool. And then it took me several months to actually figure out a flow that actually worked for me in the day. And I really hope that this call helps you reach that flow quicker. And I'm not going to say that you're going to get in the flow tomorrow because that's not realistic. It's probably going to take you some months to feel like you're in your groove with this business in terms of how you allocate your time, whether or not you're intending to work this full time in time, or if you're fitting this around a full time job, which is very much kind of the norm in this team. So hopefully this is really going to help you like strategize and really make sense of all of these pieces that you've been seeing. And this is a call I'll hasten to add that you can just come back and watch whenever it's relevant for a new coach and more seasoned coach, just to kind of re remind yourself of all of those steps. So the very first thing that I'm going to cover, and this you'll hear if you watch the National Wake Up Call, which um, is a call that happens every Monday. Um, it's from the States. It happens at 4 p.m. UK time, and um, I think it's 9 a.m. Pacific, and that'll be midday in, um, no, it wouldn't. It will be, yeah, it'll be at 12 o'clock in, um, hold on, I've said those times wrong, 8 o'clock Pacific, and 12 o'clock, no, 8 o'clock Pacific. 12 o'clock, <laughs> sorry, I'm like completely confusing you all. Anyway, <laughs> the national wake up call will appear and you will be able to see when it is because I always post it in the team page. That's the easiest way to say it. I'm not getting my head around the time zones right now, I'm sorry. So the vital behaviors are crucial. Um, they are really the foundation to the business. And so I always say to coaches, like if you're really struggling to kind of understand how this all works and you're finding it complicated, just make sure that you come back to these vital behaviors. So the four vital behaviors are being proof the product works, inviting, personal development and recognition. And being proof the product works, our product is obviously the incredible programs we follow, but it's also the incredible performance line and the Shakeology that we have. It's really, really important from the get-go if you're a brand new coach to make sure you're all in on whatever it is you've ordered. So whether or not it's Shakeology or Energize and Recover, make sure you're having it every day for 30 days because there is no chance in this business that you're going to see success if you're dipping in and out of that every other day. You can't see the value of the complete solution. And therefore, when you're inviting people um, in turn, whether that's your warm or your cold market, which is kind of friends and family or people you don't know, they're not going to really see the value because honestly, you personally haven't seen it. It's so, so important to start with you. And so being proof the product works is number one. And then sharing it in your social media, that might take you some time, you know, taking your clothes off and showing your progression photos can be really difficult for some people. And that is okay. It is great to share any form of kind of transformation you've experienced, mind, body, whatever it might be. Um, and then inviting. So this is a crucial, crucial income producing activity of what we do. And that is essentially just inviting people into the business, seeing if they are keen to join you um, and also inviting them to your boot camp, which is primarily where you're going to start as a new coach. Unless you've come into this business, you're ready to run, you want to build a team. I certainly didn't feel comfortable inviting coaches right off the bat. I wanted to just help people with the programs. I wanted to have challenges in my groups and I wanted to invite them. But if we don't invite, we don't have a business so that's crucial and I know there can be some significant fear of inviting to start with that is totally normal but I will promise you that the sooner that you start doing it the sooner it becomes normal the sooner you just make it part of your daily routine and that's a habit and remember if we don't invite people people don't know what we do exists and therefore we can't actually help people so super crucial and personal development you will hear me talking about this like you'll hear me talking about this all the time to the point that you'll be like Izzy will you please just shut up about personal development? Now, this is like 
if you imagine the success of a coach, 90% of your success is going to be related to your mindset. And therefore, personal development should, in my opinion, come before your workout. There shouldn't ever be a day where you're not pouring into personal development. And personal development is just really very much um, to do with, so it's my dog's barking because my husband's getting in. Um, that is developing the mind. And when I started, I said to myself, oh, don't be so ridiculous. I don't need a self-help book. You know, I'm like, I'm all good, thanks. I've had a 10-year corporate property career. I've, I haven't needed it until now, right? Um, but I did need it. And my goodness, did I need it. My mindset shift through this business is probably the most remarkable thing that I've seen. And I'll testament my success as, you know, now UK top coach to the fact that I pour into personal development every day. And personal development is listening, ideally listening in the Audible app to um, a personal development book um, that you can download via Amazon. I'm going to recommend a couple now in case you haven't heard of them. So You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I must have listened to that about seven or eight times. And I like to say it's a really good foundational book. It's going to help, in my opinion, pretty much most coaches because it helps with kind of all right round mindset blocks that we usually have that we don't know we have so that's one to start with and also girl wash your face by rachel hollis is quite a popular one i honestly didn't love it but some girls love it so um just find one that you resonate with and if you want ideas then definitely just you know just ask anyone in the team and then recognition so it's all about um recognition is recognizing people in your challenge groups or people in your team that are doing well whether they're getting a great physical transformation whether they're really trying with their workouts whether they've just enrolled as a coach and they put their coming out post up which you, you know you'll see me doing that and don't worry if it's not one of your challenges or one of your coaches. What's really important is that you start to create this FOMO, fear of missing out. You start to share the coach opportunity and, and, and like kind of let people in a bit and share you know, the excitement in the team. You know, when we have successes, who are the successes? Feel free to pinch whatever pictures off the team page you want to document that in your stories. And likewise, if you haven't got any challenges yet or people into your challenge group, share other transformations. Often it's nice to just ask with transformations if you're going to put someone's like body up in your your videos um, or your stories to, to ask, just common courtesy. So I'll move on to the next slide. If you have any questions as I go through, please just um, put it in the chat box and I'll try and answer it as I go through. I should have said that at the beginning. Sorry, guys. Um, so your vision. And this for me is something that as a new coach, I wasn't kind of told was important um and i didn't really get to my vision as it were until probably six months in which was the time where my business just absolutely skyrocketed skyrocketed sorry um and this vision might like change and um go full circle and your vision to start with with this business might you might just be saying to me izzy what the hell is a vision like I just want to get fit and healthy. Your vision with this business to start with might be, hey, do you know what? I just want to help a couple of people get started just to build my confidence because you, you might not see the potential of this business yet. And again, that's totally normal. Um, but what I will say is that the potential with this business is boundless. Um, you know, I was on a trip in October with the top leaders in the network and they're all six and seven figure earners. And I'm not saying that's going to happen to you guys overnight because honestly it won't. Those guys have generally been in the business kind of at least four years. Okay. So it's really important when you start as a new coach, that you're taking the long-term view. It is not a get rich quick scheme, but if you have a vision for your life, you, you know, in your ideal world, you live in this place or, you, you know, maybe you were a little girl and you have this idea of what your life would look like put it on a vision board. I will just show you mine really quickly because it's right here. I have two, so I laminate them. They're, they're in front of my face every day. These are my business goals for the year. And then I have like a five year plan, which is like how my life will look, where I'll have my holiday homes because I'm really like big into traveling. That's what we're all about. My husband also loves traveling too, which helps. Um, so just get something up on a board. It doesn't matter if it, you know, you don't even know how it looks. Even just start to put pen to paper and think about, okay, I've got off this call with Izzy and actually this is how I'd envisage my life and, and this is what I really want for my life. And start to see and understand that that is all possible with this business. It absolutely is. It all comes down to self-belief and personal development and a vision. And once you've got personal development mindset and a vision, you can start to really go for it in this business. You won't start to go for it until you've got those two connecting parts, in my opinion. So revisit them every day. And I cannot tell you how crucial this is. 
I sit down every morning. If you watch my stories, you'll see that every morning for the most part, I'm sharing what I'm writing in my day book. I'm writing out my vision. So I'm looking at my vision. I'm writing it out. I'm writing out the goals that I need to achieve to get to that vision and what I'm going to do today and this week to just make my way towards that goal. Because of course, if we set some big goal and then we're like, okay, cool, that's great. Uh, and then we kick back and we don't hold ourselves to account for shorter term goals, it's never going to happen. So be consistent and patient write in that day book every day. I know a lot of you guys work full time, but honestly, there's no excuse. I did this when I was working three jobs and my son was in preschool for two mornings a week. It takes five minutes. And honestly, this could blow up your business because when you start to connect the vision, pen to paper to your physical vision that you're seeing, you start to really get motivated. And self-motivation in this business where we spend the vast majority of our time on our own, let's face it, in our own homes is absolutely crucial. And without that, I can tell you, I would do sweet FA with my business every single day. So incredible things don't happen overnight. And I think that's really important. I think as I kind of start to really build and my coaches start to build and come through and people see that success, I think the danger that I have as kind of the leader of the team is that people look at it and think, oh, you know, that was obviously really easy for her and oh, that would never happen to me. This didn't happen overnight. This has been like grind over the passage of almost two years now. And, and with that grind, it's built more belief. It's built more vision. It's built more momentum. And with that momentum, I'm seeing the success that I'm seeing now. But it definitely didn't happen overnight. And, you know, there were difficult times. I will hasten to add. Um, okay. Time management. Oh, my goodness. I could probably talk about this all day, but you'd probably all disappear. So I'm not going to, um, the business activity tracker. Um, this is something that probably for a lot of you guys, you haven't seen this yet. Um, if you've been a coach in the team for a little while, um, then hopefully you have, but I'm just holding it up. I will share it in the new coach pod a little later on once we finish the call, but essentially it is a tracker that has been formulated by the top coaches in the business. They were sat down and they were asked, what are the key things that coaches need to do every day to see success? And they put this all into a grid. And essentially, it's been made so that it doesn't matter whether you've got five hours to work your business in a day or one, you can tick these off. It just means, again, time management. You're going to have to set timers for these things so that you can move on to the next thing and so that you can get them all done. And if you do that consistently over time, you will see success because you're sowing seeds. And if you continue to sow seeds and you continue to build trust and you continue to be consistent, it will come. And that's where it comes nicely into time blocking. So I actually, this week with my Team Cup team, we've been doing power hours, which I haven't been doing for a while. And if you're in the UK, certainly the Business Builder um, group, if you're Emerald or above, are going to be sharing power hour links. And I hadn't done it for a while and I did one with Stephanie um, yesterday and in about two hours I had almost completed my tracker and I could not effing believe it. And that's me. Like I've been in the business almost two years. I like to think I'm super self-disciplined, but that like gave me heart palpitations. The fact that actually there was just someone else there doing it. We're kind of being accountable to one another and I just got it done. So time blocking is so important. And I would just say like, if you're working from home, it is a bit of a danger, particularly if you've worked in an environment where you're employed because you've not got a boss sitting there, it's just you. So call yourself out on, are you getting up to get snacks and drinks? That's my like number one bad thing that I do. I'm like, oh, I'll just go and get a beach bar from downstairs. Oh, I'll just go and make a cup of tea, right? That is all taking me away from my business. It is self-sabotage. It's a form of self-sabotage. So call yourself out, make sure you've gone to the loo, set a timer or literally write down in your book with your pen and paper. Okay, start it at this time. I'm going to finish this task at this time and I'm not going to do anything else in the process then i'll tell you as you start to kind of see success in your business and you start to help more people whether it's challenges or coaches what tends to happen is that your messenger is filling up all the time you're going to have messages all the time if that's kind of how you build and that can be overwhelming but it doesn't have to be because essentially what i have is time blocks where i respond to those messages and if i've got messages there they just sit there until i finish that you know time slot and i have time slots responding to those messages so it doesn't have to be overwhelming which i think is a word we use a lot um morning routine that for me is huge i genuinely believe that you set the tone of your day by starting your day on the right foot and for me that means getting up at 5 or 5 30 i'm not saying you have to do the same but certainly if you work full time obviously you're going to 
try or need to find that time if you want to build this business. And what you tend to see is that initially you feel a little bit tired. Once your body gets into the routine and you make sure you're getting enough sleep and you're organized, you, it becomes addictive because you're like, oh my goodness, I've woken up at 5.30, at 7 a.m. I've got everything I need to do done for the day in terms of like personal development, workout, I've posted in my challenge group, you go off to work and you've got half of this done already and it's not even 7 a.m. So um, that for me was the moment at which my business started to blow up because I started to like just love that energy in the morning. I started to really, really enjoy it. Um, just seeing a comment. Yeah. And Steph's just said the miracle morning book changes for me. And that is absolutely, I'm so glad you've mentioned that because that that is something that really got me into all of those routines. So gratitude, vision. So when we're, when we're grateful for stuff and we write down what we're grateful for every day, it puts us in a positive mindset. Um, and that's changed my life through, for me, a really difficult period of my life. 18 months ago, I lost my mom. And so for me, that, that morning routine was what actually saved me um, and kind of lent into the business in that respect. So that, the Miracle Morning book is incredible. You can listen to it in Audible or purchase it and be intentional. As I said, like, it's just that like, okay, am I, am I doing this task or have I just got really distracted by something and being really self-aware? Because if we're not self-aware, we're going to let ourselves off the hook and we're not actually going to be doing those tasks and make the vitals a priority okay so as i said on the, on the first slide you're being proof of the product you're inviting you're um doing personal development and you're recognizing people that are coming or doing well in your challenges or coming into the team and as i said that can be anybody's coaches so share your journey on social media i cannot impress upon you enough the importance of this and as a new coach this was something that my upline did amazingly well in our team she said there should not be a single day that you do not do a post in your social media no matter what no matter what you're going through in your life and yes some days are going to be really hard i'll be honest i've had some really hard days i think there's been a couple of days i've missed a post and honestly that's because i was blocked on instagram so i couldn't so um you know, don't, don't fake enthusiasm. If you're really not feeling in your groove, maybe just have a few posts that you've got in your notes, in your iPhone, so that on those days when you're not feeling it, you've got something you can post. You've not got the pressure to kind of feel that or share what you're going through if you think it's relevant and share how the coaching is helping. Yeah. So it's really important that people see that you're real, that you share other aspects of your life. And I know in the beginning, this is kind of the number one error we see coaches making, me included, if you scroll down, we just share fitness, fitness, fitness. I'm a coach, fitness, here's my workout, fitness, 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 fitness. And the thing is, is that then what we're doing is we're not letting people in. We're not almost being vulnerable and people kind of need to see that vulnerability. They need to see you letting them in a bit. And I'm not saying that's easy to start with. I honestly didn't want to share my son. I didn't want to share all of that. That's kind of you know, I still find that hard to a certain degree, but actually people really resonate with it. And when you share other aspects of your life that are huge parts of your life, you find your tribe. And that is what is so magical about this opportunity is that whether or not they come in as challengers or as coaches, you're attracting your people. And that is like phenomenal. When you get together with your team, like as Lisa has on many occasions, we just get on. It's like, we know each other already. It's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful community. And think of your social media as your storefront. Like, would you want to join you? Would you want to join you? And I know when I kind of really want to take my business next level, I, I looked at my grid and I thought, you know what? For what I want to achieve for this business, for the six and seven figure, figure business that, that it's going to be, this is not good enough. It's not going to cut it. And honestly, I am not that girl that is good at visuals. I am not that girl that loves to spend time in Canva, which is um, the website we use to build visuals. I am very slapdash. I'll be honest with my approach to life. I'm, I say I'm like messy organized. That's, that's the kind of person I am. And so my grid was a little bit messy and I was like, do you know what? This is not going to attract my dream coach. It's not going to attract my dream challenger. Do they know what I'm doing? Actually, no. If I looked at my grid, I'm not sure they really see the full picture of what I'm doing. So that's not going to happen overnight guys. And I don't want to overwhelm you, but that is a journey and it doesn't matter how much training you do, it's still going to be a journey because as you grow and you change and you become more confident and you go through personal development, your grid will change. You'll, you'll find yourself more, which sounds super cheesy, but that's what I found. And I know a lot of the coaches in our, our global team see. Um, so your first goal as a new coach and this, I cannot tell you how important this is. This was for me as a new coach. I had no idea what I was doing. My coach said to me, make sure you post every day make sure you hit success club in your first month and do your workouts every day and be proof of the product. 
honestly, that's all I did and personal development for the first three months. That is all I did. And I invited, obviously. Hitting Success Club is helping three people get started in your first month, your, your, um, well, within your first six months now, that makes you a success club starter. That shows Beachbody that um, based on previous research they've done, the trajectory of your business is likely to be really successful. Those coaches who don't hit success club in those first six months tend to, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful. It just tends to be a bit harder because of course you're new to this. You want to see that it works. You want to have that self-belief. Where's that going to come from? You getting the results and you helping other people get started. Otherwise you're going to start to doubt yourself, which is not what we want. So you really want to come into this business with some momentum, go all in on the program. That is the most simple way of doing it. Go all in, have your Shakeology every day, follow your nutrition, like just say to yourself, do you know what? If I'm not proof 100% that I follow this program to a T and I know confidently that I've done everything I can to get the results, how the heck can you help other people? You can't. So that's what I did. I did the 21 day fix. I followed the nutrition. I did ultimate portion fix. I had the Shakeology every day. And I, I mean, I wasn't looking for weight loss, but I lost two kilos in, I think 14 days. I looked the most amazing I've ever looked in my life. My energy was boundless. I'd had acne in my life and my skin was going. And not only that, I had so much energy. And, and with that being said, I just went out there and I shared it because I was like, well, me, I can't not share this. This is incredible. And what happened is that I enrolled my first three months, all friends and family, but they just wanted to join me. They wanted that energy. They wanted whatever it was I had. Didn't necessarily matter what it was. They just wanted it. And that's how I hit Success Club. But if you don't start with that dedication to the program and you don't go all in, you will not see that success. Um, and I would also say the number one most crucial thing, um, or number two after that, is setting up a challenge group. Because if you don't put that kind of little bit of pressure on yourself to get people into your challenge group that you've set up in Facebook, you're just going to slide. And I say that because within the first week as a coach, I was like, oh, I'll just invite them into my coach's challenge group. And then I got to the part of the training where I said, set up your own challenge group. And I was like, ah, and then I had a start date. And then I was like, oh, well, I've got to get three people in here now. Like I can't have a challenge group with no one in it. And that put the fire under my backside. And that was how I hit success club my first month. And actually, if I look at the trajectory of my girls businesses who've hit success club, they have all set up a challenge group. So the proof's in the pudding, set up that challenge group, invite people to it. Doesn't matter if it's a program wide um, boot camp or it's a um, program specific boot camp, i.e. like 21 day fix or bar totally up to you but get it set up you're going to feel uncomfortable you're going to feel nervous i remember feeling like i was going to puke it was the best decision i ever made because that's what brought me to this point in my business so there are two sides to the business there's inviting people to get fit with you which is the challenges helping them with the programs and getting the total solution motivating them and then there's inviting people to work with you as a coach on your team okay as i said earlier for me it was inviting to get fit to start with i was not confident with inviting to the coach opportunity for quite some time we do have people however that come into the business and they're ready to run so you know we're never going to hold you back but don't feel that you have to do one or the other um, just make sure that you're passionately sharing whatever it is you're enjoying and the rest will follow. Either will get you to success club. So if you help three challengers, you're going to hit success club. If you help two coaches and a challenger, you're going to help um, achieve success club. If you help three coaches, you'll hit success club. So it's a challenge pack. Um, and that is success club five. So this is another really crucial thing. And this is something that when I was a newer coach helping my team, it wasn't something that I kind of spoke to them about enough, in my opinion. And that is being resourceful. If you have a question before you ask your coach, go and see if you can find the answer because you're your own boss at the end of the day. And I will do anything in my power to kind of help you guys see success. And so will whatever coach, you know, coach team you're on. But if you're going to be successful in the long run, it's going to be really important to be a self-starter. So instead of asking the coach first, try to go and find the answer first. Go into the coach online office, which is um, my coach office. Hopefully you will know where that is. You can go to the FAQ um, in coach office. Pretty much type any query and you'll find the answer. And for me, what's been enormously like helpful is YouTube. Like now these days, even if I want a training like for you guys or even for me, like, you know, we're always growing and developing. I'll go into YouTube, I'll write the name of a coach that I know and or that's really successful and then write the issue that I'm having or the, the, the training that I need help on. 
Bob's your uncle, you find it, off you go and you can share it in the team page because that's what's lovely is when I see coaches start to share stuff that they're perhaps enjoying. Like it, it, I want that page to be all encompassing where we all help each other. That's kind of the ethos. And so, yeah, this is where I got the times wrong earlier. So the National Wake Up Call is on a Monday. Um, it is at 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. UK. And I'm not sure what time Eastern because they're all completely confused. Um, but I do post it in the team page every day, um, every Monday. So do make sure to catch up on that. And then on a Sunday, this is something that we absolutely love. It's every Sunday. It's at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. UK. I know it's not an ideal time for a lot of you. You know, you've got family, it's a Sunday, but the idea is that I've tried to find a time when I could get the most people on the call because we have Canadian, American and UK coaches and often people work full time in the week. So that's why it's at that time. And it is an amazing opportunity to all come together. It's, it's how you get to know the people in your team. And honestly, the girls that do the best in this business are the girls that make that call every single week without fail, not catching recording because there was something a coach said the other day and I was like, oh my goodness, that really like rung true with me. She said, you want to get into the middle of the bed. Don't be on the edge of the bed because if you're on the edge of the bed, you'll fall off, get into the middle. And I love that because it's so true about this team thing. If you embrace the team and you get into the middle, you're going to like, you're just going to love it. If you're on the edge and you're about to slide out, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. I love that analogy so much. It's so true about our business. So what would you do with an extra $700? That shouldn't say a month. It's not my presentation, so I can't edit it, I'm afraid. Um, but what would you do with an extra $700 in your first three months? That's about, what, £550? And this slide really shows you the importance of hitting Success Club and how you can really start to, to build your income like in the first three months. So month one, um, you would get, if you had a new customer or coach, the commission is around 150 um, in dollars. That's probably about 120 pounds UK. Month two, if you do the same again, you've got that 120 pounds or 150 dollars plus the Shakeology commission of these three, um, which is roughly what, about 80 quid UK. So it's probably like 200 pounds in the UK and 246 dollars in the States. Oh, I've just clicked past the slide. And in the final month, if you do the same again and you help another three, you're getting the same again, then hopefully these guys will stay on the Shakeology if you've really taught the importance of it because you're having it yourself, um, you are going to be seeing this scale. So that's probably about 650 quid, over $700 in the three months. It's a no brainer, right? And that's why we want you to hit Success Club. We want you to hit Success Club because honestly, we do not want you to be paying for your Shakeology ever. I made back that investment within my first month and we don't want you to have to pay for it. And we want you to see that success, which is all possible. So that is it. I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, and I just wanted to see if we have any questions. I've unmuted you all. I feel like I threw an awful lot of information at you in a very short period speedy, of time. Speedy information. Yeah. <laughs> Could you follow? Okay, are you just saying that? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. You, this was recorded, so do feel free to go back and watch it because it's basically got all of the nuggets in it. Th this is kind of the most important thing and the vision and the PD. Um, I think what I found useful this week is I'd, I think on one of these that I watched recorded, you said about the files in the group. And when you oh, click yeah. through all the files and you see how many resources there are in there, it sort of makes everything so much easier as well. That, thank you for that reminder because I didn't say that, did I? Um, <laughs> there is a file section in our team page which has a lot of um, documents which I don't tend to like post in there and say go and check the file section, but thank you for that, Steph, because that is so, so true. There is a file section in our team page. And it's got a lot of these resources or actually additional resources over and above what I've just mentioned. Um, so hopefully there's like even invite scripts. That was something I should have mentioned. The invite scripts are in the file section, which are scripts that um, I've used. Claire, who I used to do a lot with, has used. I wouldn't say like copy and paste them. I would just amend them and like feel the invite and make it your own because that kind of connection piece is so important with your following and you don't want to sound like a robot um again if you want help with invite scripts please just reach out to me um but they are in the file section 
Thank you for that, Seth, because I completely forgot to mention that. Um, were there any questions? Lisa, did you want to add anything? No, I think the only thing that really is quite um, imperative, I think, is when you it's i think it's good to to really reiterate the fact that it, that this isn't going to happen overnight it takes a long time to build up um and i think the phrase you've always used that i really like is for people to know like and trust you before you know they they want to come on board with you um one of my new coaches tamra who was going to be on the call tonight um literally i started speaking to her last april and it just goes to show you how long it takes for some, you know, to be able to to build your business. Um, and it's not going to happen just three months in there. You've got this massive business and you're earning loads of money. It does take time. But yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. And I think that is so, so true. And I think that's why holding on to your vision is really important because you're going to need to hold on to that vision to keep going. And there are going to be days when it's going to be hard and it isn't, you know, the potential of this business is huge. And if you stick at it and you're consistent over the passage of time, you will see phenomenal success. And that was the thing that was really interesting about that leadership trip. You know, most of those coaches on that trip that were earning six and seven figures, they had been a coach for at least four years and they had been consistent for four years. So and and actually, I love the fact you said that, Lisa, because when I was a new coach, that was something Janine said. She said, you need to be all in on this business for a year and then decide whether or not it's for you. Because unless you go all in, it's like any job. Like, would you start a job and quit or like do it ha like half-heartedly a week later? You wouldn't. And and the same is true of this business. And I know like Lisa's been in my business for over a year now and she's doing really well and she's getting coaches who really trust her and she's finding her tribe because she's been consistent and she's trusted the process and she's shown up no matter what. Um, and, and that builds trust and that, you know, with people who don't know you, who are just on Instagram or Facebook, it's going to take time. Um, and that's why I said like my first three months, I didn't enroll any cold market, anyone I didn't know. It was all because I had to get uncomfortable and speak to my friends and family. And in the end, I was just like, do you know what? Why am I not sharing this with them? Because I'm feeling these amazing benefits and I'm too scared to talk to them about it. That's ridiculous. Making it about me, not about them. Um, so yeah, thank you, Lisa, for that. But yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, um, Ginny, do you have any questions at all? Or are you good? No, I don't think so. Um, I'm trying to work out Zoom, is he? <laughs> oh, don't worry, it's all right. I was exactly the same when I started. I'm I like on mute and then I couldn't wear the video. But I, I've pretty much listened the whole time. So, And then the kids are coming downstairs. And, but yeah, I've got it. It's good. I know it's how really it good. is. It's a good story. Good. Well, let me know if you've like got any questions at all. I will do. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And I'm really sorry if I zoom through that at about a million miles an hour, but I, what I don't like to do is just like waffle on and on for an hour. And then you guys have got an hour's call to watch. It's like, that's just going to give you brain fry. So no, it was perfect. It was really good. Okay, I good. picked up on everything and, um, okay, good. no, it was really good. Good. And I hope you're feeling better. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> well, Oh, now I'm coughing. <laughs> now you've said it. Oh. Like asymptomatic. <laughs> oh, no. Right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys hop off. I've got another call starting on this link in 20 minutes, so I'm going to leave it open, but I'm actually going to be leaving the room. Um, so thank you so much for making the time. And honestly, you guys who've made it live, I can promise you that this will change your business because you've been live to soak it in, and it makes a huge difference. So well done. See you later. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Susie. Thanks, Bye. Susie. No worries. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so she spoke to all of them. She was on. She didn't ask me if I had any questions.